Angela here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by. Please make sure that you stick around until the end. If you like it here, go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment. Let's chat a little bit and get to know each other. If you're returning, thank you for coming back. Today's video, as you can tell by the title, is going to be my luxury wish list. I love watching these videos. I love to see the things that people are coveting, the things that people have on their wish list, the things that they would or could or will buy eventually. And so I wanted to go ahead and film one of my own, especially because I don't really see a lot of people with things that I have wish listed. And you know, personal style is relative, it's subjective, you know, it's personal. And I'm excited to maybe share some things that you haven't seen before. So again, if you like what you see, make sure that you like, subscribe, leave comments, all of those things. Um, I'm not doing like an exhaustive list. Listen, I have a bunch of wish lists. I wish lists on every site, I feel like. My Teresa, on Farfetch, on Essence, on, um, Instagram. I use the Instagram shopping tab to to um <laughs> wish list things. So I'm wish listing everywhere I go. Um but that's sort of how I shop as well. I typically if I'm buying items, especially if they are luxury items or more expensive items, I'm buying them off of a wish list. I try not to make impulsive splurge purchases. I mean, I do sometimes. I'm not perfect, but I try not to and wish list sort of help me keep that under control and also stick with things that really are going to work well within my personal style and that I'll get a lot of use out of and that I can pair with a whole bunch of other stuff um, in my wardrobe. So with all of that being said, we're gonna jump right into my luxury wish list. And as I said, it may be a little different than what you're used to seeing. There aren't any Chanel bags or Hermes or Bottega or any of those girls on there. Not that I don't like that stuff. I do like that stuff and I love watching people's wish lists that have that stuff on it. But none of that really fits with my style or aesthetic. So the items that I'm going to share with you today are really Angela. So as I mentioned, this isn't an exhaustive list of things that I have on wish list across all of the sites that I love to visit. Um, but these are some of the things that I am coveting the most and I wanted to share with you all. Some of them are things that I plan on buying really soon. Some of them are things that are going to take me a while to maybe save for. Some of them are things that I may never end up getting, but I like to keep them on my wish list because they serve as sort of a um, inspiration. Maybe I'll see something from a more affordable luxury brand or something like that, that's similar to it, that will satisfy my desire for that item. So I do keep things around that I probably would never buy like six seven hundred dollar pair of jeans so anyway hopefully that makes sense that's that's my logic anyway it makes sense to me <laughs> okay so we're gonna start off with a couple pair of shoes that I have on my wish list the first pair is sneakers of course it's the waxed canvas Rick Owens dark shadow Ramones in high top now these are from um, spring, summer, like 14. So these are old shoes. I'll probably never buy these shoes because they're not available. I've looked everywhere. I've looked on resale sites. Um, I actually prefer the canvas, the wax canvas, um, just because I like the high top version of those. Um, but I haven't been able to even find those on resale sites where they aren't like an exorbitant amount of money um, or they aren't kind of beat up. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I haven't been able to find my size in that shoe, I would absolutely buy those resale. I've been looking, as I said. Um, I also like the leather version. Those aren't available anywhere either. Um, I was able to find um, like a gray color on Farfetch, but I'm not interested in that. I want the black and white. If you know me, you know that I love a high top chuck. This is more like an elevated version of a high top chuck. I'm really into the um, platform chucks right now, and these remind me of those, but again, a more elevated version. And I'm just super obsessed with them. Again, I may never get them. However, I keep them on my wish list because every once in a while, I'll go back and look at them and be like let me just go and and see if it's some um, out there on the resale market for me or if they ever were to re-release them I would snatch them up I think the retail price for the waxed canvas ones um is about $615 I would actually pay $615 I'm just telling you now I would go ahead and splurge it's worth the splurge to me because I love them that much and they're super popular right now they're really trendy everybody has them but those are one of the trendy items where like I don't care because it fits my aesthetic to the T and even after they aren't trendy anymore they will still fit really well within my wardrobe so I really don't care that they're super popular 
right now. So the next shoe that is on my luxury wish list is a very popular brand right now, but the stylish shoe that is on my wish list, I haven't really seen a lot of people uh, wear them or wish list them, and that's Amina Mawadi. I'm really feeling Amina Mawadi right now. I love her designs. I love her unique uh, heel designs and all of that. But the pair of shoes that uh, I have on my wish list is just a regular old pair of patent leather slide-in mules with just like the triangle toe. So they're called the Caroline Patent Leather Mule is what they're called. And they retail for about $650. They don't even have like the distinctive like Amina Mawadi heel on them. I just really like that mule and I really like that triangle detail in the front. And I am a very like plain heel person. I don't want the sparkles and the bedazzles. I think it looks cute. I think it looks cute on other people. And I've seen people style it really well. It's just not really me, but I really like the designer and I really like the brand. Um, so these patent leather uh, mules are like right up my alley and I was this close to buying them and I didn't, but I kept them on my wish list because if I am in the market to splurge on a pair of heels for a special occasion or something like that, if these are still available, I will definitely grab a pair of these. I would absolutely pay the retail price of $650. This is a worth this splurge to me. I love these shoes. So these are gonna stay on my wish list at least throughout the year and you never know. You might see them on my channel one day. Okay, so moving on from shoes to something that if you aren't new to my channel, then you've heard me say that I don't usually spend a lot of money on this thing and it is sunglasses. I don't spend a lot of money on sunglasses because I'm careless. I am irresponsible. I will leave them in a restaurant. I will leave them in a car, somebody else's car because I don't drive on a train. I will leave wherever they gonna get left. They gonna get left. And so I stopped spending lots of money on sunglasses a while ago because I just cannot keep up with them. And I think the most that I've paid for a pair of shades in the last year or so are a pair of Poppy Lissabon shades that I just recently got and they were like $115. That was a stretch for me. So anything more than that is a splurge when it comes to sunglasses. Howsoever, there are a couple pair of sunglasses that I am dying for that are on my luxury wish list. One in which I plan on buying really soon. Hopefully they're available when I actually get them. And that pair is the Coke Gaia Hera frame in the canary yellow. So they're like a rectangle frame and they're outlined in like this canary yellow color and then they have a, another line of like an off-white and then just sort of like a faded brown lens. They are so so, so dope. I really want to grab these for my family vacation coming up in July. We'll see. We'll see. They're $228. Again, that is, oof, that's more than I'm willing to pay for sunglasses typically because as I said, I'm very careless, but I really, really, really want these sunglasses. So if you see me with them in July, it's because I went ahead and just went for it. Let's just hope that they're available because Coke Gaia is like the quintessential like vacation travel brand for the girls that love luxury and the world is opening up and the people are traveling and so I wouldn't be surprised if these actually sell out but I absolutely love them. I would definitely pay the $228 against my better judgment because they are just bomb.com. The next pair of sunglasses on the list are by Prada and I love these sunglasses. I, it's the shape for me. It's the shape and it's the complete blackout lens. I'm into a complete blackout lens. Like it just looks so dope. You look like um, old dude from the Matrix. What was his name? Neo? Neo? Theo? Neo? They're the Prada symbol glasses. They come in both black and white. I want the black version. I want to be blacked out. They are so, so dope. To be completely honest, they may just stay on my wish list though. They're $410. I, Mm, girl, I'm not even gonna play myself. I'm gonna keep them on my wish list just in case somebody maybe wants to do something nice for me. <laughs> I can send them their way or just to remind myself that I really, really like this style and shape. Um, maybe I'll see a less expensive a pair a more affordable luxury pair out there somewhere but i'm gonna keep these on my wish list just as like a reminder of how dope they y'all they are so dope i don't know maybe one day i may think i deserve a treat and i might end up buying them i don't really see it 
but they are so clean. They are so clean. I am into them. So next up is a couple bags. I mentioned in last week's video where I talked about some of my favorite affordable luxury brands. I talked about a tote that I found from Chloe that I was absolutely loving. And I told you in that video that it was on my wish list and I shared it with you then, but I want to share it with you now as well because I am in the market for a good tote and I know everyone has the Reeve Gauche or that Fendi one that I don't know the name of um and those are beautiful I love them I actually have the Reeve Gauche on my wish list simply because I'm in the market for a tote I'm not paying $1,300 for a tote I'm just I I'm not doing it. But I did go on a hunt to find a more quality tote because I, right now I'm carrying a, a black girl in Trader Joe's tote that my friend bought me, which I absolutely love. I have carried the dust off of that thing. And because I carried it so much, that's what made me feel like I should go ahead and just splurge on a tote. Um, Love the Reeve Gauche, like I said, I'm not paying for that. Love the Fendi one, not paying for that. So I found the Chloe uh, large woody tote and I talked about in last week's video as well how Chloe's accessories tend to be uh, slightly less expensive than their counterparts. So this large woody tote bag retails for about $990 where the Reeve Gauche starts at 1100 and it goes up from there and this is just as beautiful it is luxury it's expensive and i absolutely love it my only thing is it's kind of bright like they have other versions where the leather and the lettering is a different color but it's still like this super light colored fabric and i just don't really know how this gonna work because when i say i carry it every day i mean i carry it to the gym i carry it to the store i, I carry it overnight i just it's it goes everywhere so it's gonna get some some wear and tear i absolutely love this bag i have it on my um wish list because i haven't decided whether i want to go ahead and take the plunge i kind of want to keep on looking i also have just this plain oversized tote bag from acne studios on my wish list that runs about 350 dollars it may be more practical it may make more sense to just buy that one so that is also on my wish list a little less of a splurge than the chloe which is why it's not really a part of this list but it is because i'm mentioning it um but that is a high contender as well because it just it's more practical and it makes more sense and it's 350 dollars as compared to 990. Speaking of Acne Studios, the next item on my wish list is a bag from Acne Studios. And it's their mini Masubi crossbody bag. So it's in this beautiful like cognac brown color, which I'm really feeling. My Chloe Mini Marcy is in the same color. And I've realized that this is pretty much a neutral for me. Like I wear it with just as much stuff as I wear my black mini Antigona with. And so when I saw this bag, I was like, I want that bag. I want it. It's a micro bag, so it's super small just like I like it um, it's a crossbody but it also has a top handle I'm not that much of a top handle girl but I like the variety and it only retails for $650 so it's highly likely that when I'm ready to purchase another bag that this is going to be the bag so long as it's available. I love the leather. I love that there's no logos on it other than the really small Acne Studios logo. I love the versatility of the crossbody and the top handle. It's absolutely worth, for me, the $650 investment. Plus, I can get this and the tote <laughs> for the price of the chloe tote again the chloe tote is much less than some of the other brands um in its category but girl if i can get two acne studio bags for the price of the chloe bag the math says you get the two acne studio bags my math says that that's that's how my math maths okay okay so we're down to the last two items because i didn't want to make this video super super long if it does really well maybe i'll make a part two because <laughs> i have enough materials to do a whole series on this um but this time around we'll keep it cute and short so the next two items on the list are jeans I'm a jeans girl. We've established this on this channel. I love jeans. My favorite designer jeans right now is hands down Mason Margiela. I love every pair of jeans that they design. They're outrageous, they're unique, they're quirky, they're all the things that I love in a jean. Of course, I have two, three, four, five pair of Margiela jeans on my wish list. Of course I do, of course I do. So the first pair of jeans is the straight leg distressed pair from Margiela, duh. Um, and they're just the normal straight leg jean and then they have like this uh, slit on each side of the thigh and I just love this jean and I've actually seen them on 
other people on YouTube and I'm like, oh, they look as good on as they do in the picture and I want them. Howsoever, they are 650 whole American dollars. $650 and girl, <laughs> mm -mm. but I love them. I love them and I'm probably never going to buy them. I'm going to be quite honest. Howsoever, they stay on my wish list because I just like the visual and I'm just hoping one day that a more affordable luxury brand, I'm not talking about a dupe, so I don't want something off of ASOS or Zara or something like that, but maybe a good affordable luxury reference to this jean like maybe a goldie or mother or something like that another really good quality brand it doesn't have to be this exact style but maybe you know a little bit inspired by so i keep them on there because i just absolutely love going into my wish list and seeing these jeans because they're perfect the second pair of jeans on my wish list is also a pair of morgilla jeans but it is the mm6 uh, Mason Margiela jeans, which is sort of like their um, C by Chloe or Mark by Mark Jacobs. So it's it still has the same aesthetic of Margiela. It's kind of the same design thread as Margiela. It's just a lot less <laughs> money. Not a lot less, but it definitely costs less. Um, it looks like it may be for maybe a younger audience. Um, it has slightly more of a younger, more trendy vibe, but still quintessential Margiela. So this next pair of jeans is also a straight leg pair of jeans, but it has this white patch on the side of it and it gives the description of what the jean is, like the brand of the jean, um, what season they were designed, what runway they went down. They just, they are so dope and so unique. Can you imagine just wearing these jeans and people staring, trying to read them as you walk down the street or people ask Asking you what they say talk about a conversation piece this is what I look for when I buy jeans especially if I'm going to spend $465 on them I want people to be asking questions about them so again MM6 has that quintessential like Margiela like style for a little bit less so these are $465 and the other pair was $635 so quite a bit a dip, not quite a bit but you know a couple hundred dollars couple hundred dollars different is that even a full two hundred dollars my math don't math without a calculator but the mm6 pair is slightly cheaper so guys that is going to conclude today's luxury wish list video i hope that you enjoyed it again if you did and this video does well i'll be happy to do another one because i have plenty more items that I can share with you um hopefully you got some sort of like unique perspective again these things are fun to watch but they can get really redundant so hopefully my personal style offered you a little bit of variety that you were maybe missing in these styles of videos make sure that oh speaking of luxury I am wearing some black owned luxury so this is a muscle tee from Fee Noel um, who is a black luxury designer out of of New York um, she runs her entire operation out of New York and so I picked this up a couple months ago I've actually filmed a video on this before but I don't care <laughs> I wanted to wear it again so here it is just wanted to mention it because I had it on and I want the people to see um, anyway make sure that you're following me on Instagram my handle over there is B Angela underscore B E and I will talk to y'all in the next video bye